on Dr. Vahia's lecture. I just want to place some few facts. The uh, some misconceptions about our civilization and our ideas. The one which he has suggested that about decimal system. According to me, our decimal system of numbers is in Rugveda. I can mention several Rugvedic uh, ruchas in which decimal system is already there. For example, Mandal 1, 164 uh, Sukta and 48th Rucha, you will find out the decimal system of numbers. Mandal 2, for example, 18th Sukta and 3 and 4 numbers of Ruchas, you will find out the numbers 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, all. So, decimal system of numbers in India is since Rugvedic time. And Rugvedic time, according to Lokmanya Tilak, is about 400, 4000 BC. That is, that is his calculation. So, it was there from, in, in, from the beginning. You can give several examples. So, for example, Mahabharat. Mahabharat Akshuni, what it means, Akshuni. So, the numbers are given. How many chariots are there? How many elephants are there? So, chariots number, say for example, they give and that number is quite big one and it comes to about 21,870. Then how many horses are there? 65,610. How many uh, soldiers, padati they call it, foot soldiers and the number is 1,9350. So, all 10 or 9 numbers are there. So, in Mahabharata also, not only that, in Manusruti also, first chapter of Manusruti and you go to 70, stanza number 70, 72, 73. So, this yuga system of numbers, yuga system is explained there. Kariyu 4,32,000, then Dwapar 8,64,000, then uh, Krutayuk or uh, whatever that, it is three times, say 12,96,000. And the fourth one is 17 lakhs 828,000. Unless you have got decimal system of numbers, you cannot give these numbers at all. And Manuspruti again was written before Christ. So our decimal system of numbers was there from the beginning. Second point I would like to tell you about Shulva Sutra. We call Pythagoras hypothesis. This Pythagoras hypothesis is clearly mentioned in Shulva Sutra, which was written about 1500 BC. So, we should actually call it Bodhayan hypothesis or Bodhayan theorem because it was long back initiated in that particular book. So, we have to actually change the names. You can call it Bodhayan theorem, Bodhayan plus say Archimedes, the Pythagoras theorem. So, you have to change that. Then he has given even the uh, triplets. There are triplets are there the Pythagorean triplets. Several triplets are given in Shulva Sutra. Shulva Sutra gives the value of root 2, which is 5 digits correct. 1.414215 is the value which is given there. And modern value is 1.414213. So, the mistake is of about 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. So, that is a mistake. So, unless you have got the knowledge of this decimal system of numbers, and not only root 2 value is given, root 3, root 5, all these values are given because they are required as hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. So, all these values are given there. Then as he has suggested Vedanga Jyotish and we were knowing that intercalary months must be introduced after 5 years. Now, our calendar, Indian Nirian calendar is directly related to the sky. And if you understand this particular calendar, without looking in the calendar, I can tell you so many things. So, today is Amavasya for example. People call it New moon day, I call it no moon day. There is no moon today, means it cannot be seen. But I can very easily calculate the position of sun today. And it is just leaving, means it is about to leave after 3 4 days, Taurus. And if I know the position of sun, I know the position of moon. I can tell you when moon will rise tomorrow in the morning. If I know the position of the moon today, I can tell you what is the moon position after 15 days. After 15 days, it will be in Jeshtha. And you can actually see what are the sky. For example, today, when sun and moon are setting, Gemini must be rising. Means Gemini must be setting with them. And uh, Scorpius must be rising. So, all this sky is in front of us. If we know, 
our Indian Niryan calendar. And this Vedanga Jyotish is nothing but five-year calendar. In those days, they used to calculate the calendar for five years and repeat that particular calendar after some modification for next five years. So that was done in those days. If we come to Aryabhat, I came to, uh, I just saw one uh, article in Nature, December 2001, uh, December issue. And there was a, uh, the title of the article was Science in Terse Verse, Science in Terse Verse. So sign table is given in four lines. Our peculiarity, Indian peculiarity, scientists, is to give the things very simple language or very simple. So he gives the sign table in four lines and the article is about that. Now, for example, another question was there. How the decimal system went to, say, for example, Arabistan and then in Europe? Brahma Gupta is responsible for this particular thing. Brahma Guptas, there are two books. One is the Brahma Sputa Siddhanta and the another one is Khanda Khadyat. The name is very peculiar. Khanda Khadyat means sweet food, but it is a book on astronomy. And it is a current book. Current means just simple calculations. So these two books were first translated in Arbastan. The name of the first book was given Sindh Hind. That was the name given. And the name of the another book was Al Arkand. And then they came to know that a decimal system of numbers is being used in India. And that was a very simple system and they accepted it immediately. But when it went to Europe, decimal system was banned for numbers hundreds of years. I can tell you that. Then one person came from Italy, Fibonacci, Leonardo Fibonacci. He wrote one book in 1202. The name of the book is Libera Basi. In Libera Basi, there are first nine chapters he has devoted to decimal system of numbers. And he has appealed to the Europeans that you accept this system. It is very easy. You can calculate. So I many times tell our students that I will give two Roman numbers and you multiply them and show me. They will not be able to multiply or not be able to divide. But still, Europeans did not accept this decimal system for 300 more years. And they accepted this decimal system after 15th century. So they were totally backward in mathematics. Our Bhaskaracharya was quite ahead in mathematics. In 1120, he wrote one book, Siddhanta Sharomani. His Lilavati book is translated in almost all the languages. How very simply they used to tell the basic facts. I will just tell you one or two examples. He has found out the circumference of the earth. Very simple. I know there is one Erastothenes and he has calculated the circumference of the earth by one method. He has to first find out where is the shadow today. Go to 5000 stadia, that was the measure of distance and again find out where is the shadow. That is not necessary. Bhaskaracharya says that you select two cities, find out their latitudes. They should be on same say longitude and if you know that you know the circumference of the earth i used to give one example kolhapur and satara because i have stayed there for a number of years kolhapur and satara the difference between latitude is 1 degree and distance is about 110 so from 1 degree 110 360 how much you get the circumference of the earth so this is how bhaskaracharya says what is the circumference of the earth pythagoras hypothesis proof he has given in two lines. I have studied the Pythagoras hypothesis proof one and a half page in those days. In those days, they used to teach the Pythagoras hypothesis a proof for one and a half page. But Pythagoras proof, Bhaskaraja gives in two lines and it is very simple proof. I do not know why these types of proofs are not in our curricula. These types of proof can be introduced in school level also and they can find out what was the beauty of our uh, ancestors. One more thing I came to know, very recent, Keralian mathematics were quite ahead. For example, there was one Madhav, his date of birth year is 1350. And you must be knowing, those who are connected with mathematics, there is a science series, cost series, then tan series, pi by 4 series, all those series are given by this Madhav. About 250 years before Newton, now, if you go to internet 
and you write down madhav newton series you will get that series now they have recognized that madhav has first found out these series these series is not they are not very easy for example sin x is x minus x cube upon 3 factorial plus x5 x raised to 5 by 7 factorial and so on and so forth madhav has given value of pi very accurately the value he has given is 3.141592653 that is the value given 10 digit accurate value nobody has given in his period throughout the world so that was our beauty very recently i came to i just read one article it, it was a review the review was on a book and the name of the book mathematics in india written by kim flofker she is a lady she visits india very many times she has written that book and i was surprised that even today in 21st century 10 years are almost over now the western scholars are studying indian mathematics indian sciences and all other things and we are neglecting these things in india that is what is happening now what our leaders should have done in the beginning in 1947 we got independence they should have approached all the governments say for example german france britain they have stolen so many manuscripts from india i can tell you that warren hexting came here he went to varanasi and he asked all the brahmins you put down your manuscripts in front of me and he took all those manuscripts in england so that has happened so government has not taken note of these things we have to at least find out how many manuscripts are there whether they are on internet because there are some manuscripts on internet if they are not in internet or not in india we have to find out which manuscripts are there in different countries so that type of work this organization kept keep taking is in its hand and we will find out how many different types of manuscripts there are what type of knowledge we had and we were quite ahead you remember in almost all the fields you take architecture you take sculpture you take say for example music and all the fields in fact in india every subject was transformed into science now we call science means mathematics physics chemistry biology etc it is not there in india science the definition of science is different uchchara shastra is a how to pronounce the words is a science how to form the words is a science nirukta so many things are sciences astronomy is a science sangeet is a science music is science everything is converted or transformed into sciences so that is the beauty of india and that is why this particular literature has survived knowledge means knowledge will never dis be destroyed people ask me why there is nothing now means in the sense they compare with america and england and etc i give them very simple example in 1190 1192 or 93 bhakti arkhil ji completely destroyed this nalanda university in nalanda university there were three more buildings and in those buildings there were lot of literature hyun sen came here he copied 400 volumes from india and went to china so all these thing was completely destroyed and not only nalanda university vallabhi university vikramashila university all those universities were destroyed in that particular period around about 1200 ad after that there was no university in india till britishers established three universities in india in 1857 so there was no university so naturally knowledge could not flourish it was a black period of india this 600 years is actually a black period of india because there was no no say for example emperor has given any credit to knowledge so that has happened in india the foreigners had their dark period say for example up to 15th century and we had our dark period after 1200 to say for example 1857 so that has happened in india that is why knowledge was completely curbed and nothing has happened in this country for 600 years so that is actually reason but many times we learn wrong history and this wrong history is being means taught in this particular country for numbers of years as if we are not knowing anything this is not the case we knew so many things modern ideas were there say for example if you go 
to one book, uh, Sapta Padarthi. In Sapta Padarthi, ideas like Einstein's are there. And ideas means matter is equivalent to energy. That idea is there. There is no mathematics in that, but idea is there. So such type of ideas you can get in these different literatures. And that is what is our ancient civilization was. It is a knowledge-based civilization. Now particular, this particular civilization has become money-based civilization. Now every leader comes up, establishes engineering college, medical college, grabs money and no education, no knowledge. This is what has happened in India now. But it was not like that. In earlier days, it was a knowledge-based society. And that is why everybody was coming in India to learn the knowledge. So that, is, that has happened. So we must be aware of all these things. Thank you for calling me here to participate in this particular program. Thank you very much.